So real quick, I'm just gonna play the beginning of this video so we can watch through the bride's entrance to the ceremony space, and then I'll kind of walk us through how I planned and set up different camera angles and what my thought process was in trying to capture this moment and why it was so significant to the couple. So firstly, this couple met on this bridge, and so they had let me know this in their in inquiry form, contact form. I met with them the day before. Uh, this is a Thursday wedding, so on Wednesday, my friend who kind of documented behind the scenes showed up with me. We met with the couple and all their friends and family who were at the rehearsal and the walkthrough for ceremony, and so that gave us some time to look at the space, the layout. I'll cut to the second shot right here. This really allowed us, you know, the day before to figure out, okay, here's our space, here's our main area that we're working with, and we know the bride is going to walk over the bridge. I think everybody walked over the bridge, but she walked over by herself. So we already knew, here's our space, here's what we're working with. Directly behind us here, which I think you can see in the next shot, a wide shot, or even here, you can see there's water behind in this wide shot. You can't really see it in this wide, and in none of these shots, but in this drone shot, all of this ceremony was like right over in here and the bridge is right over here. All this water was behind us. So we knew we had a lot of different options as to how we wanted to capture and document this moment. Um, so anyways, going with shot number one, this was a 100 to 400 millimeter camera. I think my, my F stop was at like a 5.6, uh, somewhere in that range. And I just set the focus point because the dad was waiting and standing here for a while. And they're like, this is where dad's going to stand. So I kind of set this as my focal point. Obviously, they're a little bit blurred out. She's definitely a little bit blurred out. But my f-stop was um, at such that, you know, I didn't have to worry about um, perfect, perfect focus. Nailing the focus exactly because I knew this was our general area. So I set my focus point to this. Our next shot I want us to look at is this shot here. This was another tripod. This is a 7200 set. I just set my focus point to basically be this bridge. Um, it's pretty straight in front of us. So from left to right, this focal length, um, our distance is going to be practically the same from like here to here. Not much is changing. She's not really moving toward us or away from us. So I knew I could set my focal point there and let it go. I love how that shot turned out. Um, and again, this is like a probably like a 10 minute video of just waiting for people to walk across the 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 bridesmaids the groomsmen uh the groomsmen actually came up from a different direction but all the bridesmaids individually walked across the bridge so again i was like this looks like a really sweet spot i want this foreground of these these trees um the branches hanging down but we'll get to this shot and all these shots here in just a minute when i show you the aerial perspective and we can actually see where each of the cameras are positioned our next shot is our wide. This is my classic 24 to 70. I'm usually sitting in like the 25 to 30, maybe 35 millimeter focal length. And I was like, if I zoom out any further, I think even without this guy standing up, we would have seen my camera over here that was getting the close up straight to the groom's face, which is our very next shot. I think that we cut to. Yeah, there it is. Um, so I didn't want this wide angle here to see that. And I will generally zoom in as far as I can until these cameras on the left and right side of the aisle are cut off. And that will be kind of be like, okay, cool. I won't zoom in or zoom out anymore until I reposition these cameras later on in the ceremony. And then our next shot, we just cut back to that one to one to 400 millimeter on my tripod. They're a little bit further ahead than this placement here where the dad was standing. I'm going to probably go in and mask some of this stuff again out. Again, this was like a 10, 15 minute video recording just to try to capture this moment. So I'll be able to kind of get them out of this shot. Um, no idea whose wagon this is, but then we cut to our close up on our groom. 
which is just a great angle. This is also a non-traditional. She came in not down an aisle, but from the side. So I was like, okay, my tripod has to be in a, a little different of a spot than usual. And then we cut back to, this is my gimbal shot, just me moving with them. Cut back to the groom shot. And then I knew, instead of trying to get to the middle of the aisle or start positioning cameras or go flying, get my drone out of the way, I just ran up to this angle for the close-up on the groom and real quick did a tilt up right before they hugged and then did this slow tilt down. And I'm like, I think I started to, to adjust some other cameras or I might have been trying to get uh, fly my drone back around the from way behind the ceremony space to land it. And I was like, oh, shoot, wait, they're going to hug a lot quicker than uh, a lot of what a lot of times usually have. Sometimes they might stand there for three minutes. This is like got going quick. And I was like, oh, shoot, I need to get them hugging. So I start to move the camera. And I'm like, oh, no, they're about to hug. And then I was like, oh, wait, I want to get some movement in this shot. And then I was like, okay, I want to get this shot when they hug, and I want to do a nice tilt down. Just get that emotion, shaking hands, yeah, nice tilt down. And then I eventually repositioned and reset this this angle for the close-up on the groom. But anyways, let's take a, a few steps back and look at kind of the, the big shot that will reveal the placement of all these cameras. So this drone shot. So here is that 24 to 70 that I showed us just a moment ago. This camera angle, this camera right here, is this shot and angle right here. And funny enough, you can see the drone right up here, just hovering, moving around, getting that drone shot. So this angle here is this tripod and camera right here. The next shot we want to look at was this 7200 of getting the bride walking over the, or the bridge with this nice foreground. This camera is actually hidden underneath this tree. And even if I zoomed in, I don't think we would be able to to uh, to see it. But our tripod is right, that might be one of the legs right there. It's actually underneath this tree, getting this nice, beautiful foreground and shot in this frame. I love all this. It's just everything kind of makes our eyes draw kind of really pretty much to this spot. And then we cut back to our wide. Our groom cam, actually let's cut back to this one. Our very first shot of this opening sequence. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if we can see it, but I think this might be my tripod right here. So here's my tripod on the sidewalk, pretty far away. But like I said, it's a one to four hundred millimeter, and it looks like this, and it looks like this. So that tripod was far, far away. No one was really going to get in the shot. Um, it was a good creative fun angle and this camera actually eventually became like my middle almost middle of the aisle it was right next to my 2470 for a lot of the rest of the ceremony i was grabbing it and taking it off the tripod and using it for some like really tight handheld shots close-ups on people crowd reactions parents reactions it i mean it's, it's such an awesome versatile lens i literally bought it just for outdoor close-up shooting for ceremony stuff. And if I could get stuff for cocktail, great. Other close-ups, great. But it is such a versatile, awesome lens to have for the ceremony. So that's where this 1-400 to was set on the sidewalk far away, getting this shot and everybody walking over the bridge. And then our last one here, the close-up on the groom coming up right here and getting this great reaction of him crying. I mean, such a such a great reaction, such a good moment. We can actually see that camera in our tripod or our drone shot right here. I mean, it was pretty close. And luckily, I was like, there's no one in this last chair. I asked the planner. I asked the couple. I asked Kendall. Will there anyone be anyone in this far corner chair? And they were like, nope, this one will be sitting empty. So I knew I could kind of encroach and move my tripod a little bit closer. Um, a little bit closer than I normally would. Normally, this tripod would be out a little bit further over here. Or it might come straight down and kind of split the front row and the front chairs and the bridesmaids and sit in the middle between them. But this one here, I didn't know I was just going to have a nice tight angle. I knew the dad and the bride were going to walk down and then cut be through, cut through. So I knew I couldn't block this space. I knew they needed to walk through, which eventually leads us to this shot here where whoop, they walk right in front of the camera. And they might've been probably, they were probably like 
six to ten feet away from my camera so they weren't walking right past it but like oh i've only had this in one other wedding where the bride and the dad came in from this left side and it always makes for such a great shot because it's like oh it's so good it's reaction oh but if we let that shot draw out long enough they then walk into it like it's just so good and even like him looking he's looking at her she's looking at him and at this point i had backed away with my gimbal as they, you know, make an eye contact and just kind of pivoted and followed them from behind. And I think that's where then I was like, oh, they're going to hug and exchange. I think my 7200, the close up that I had on the groom, will look better than zooming in on my 24 to 70 on my gimbal. And then as we kind of proceed a little bit forward, again, I was showing you this. That was the, this is the ceremony site. This is what we had to work with. Um, for that space and location. Now here is my 24 to 70 on my gimbal. And I have this basically in the, not the middle of the aisle, but if I can zoom back, my gimbal never sits right in the middle. It's always like tucked in along a chair. That way, if they want a wide shot or if they want to walk up the aisle or if they stand at the end of the aisle, it's not like my gimbal's just sitting right in the middle. And I've had photographers accidentally bump and knock my gimbal over because it's two feet off the ground. They don't see it. So I ended up tucking this gimbal shot. And uh, what I often do is just putting my gimbal right in, tucked in against the edge, looking up the aisle, getting this nice shot. It's kind of like a medium. It's not really a close up. It's also not a super wide. And then... What this camera was doing and accomplishing in this shot here, my 7200, ended up eventually getting brought out from under this tree and moved up to about here. Um, and I think even for that shot I just showed, I actually moved my camera back because the the speakers, you can see the microphone stand right here. The people speaking were here. And I was like, oh, shoot, my I, I don't want to shoot through the person speaking to get to the couple and have them in the way. And I also don't want this camera over here, my 7200 on the groom being, you know, I don't want this camera looking over at the speaker to have this camera in the, in the shot. So I ended up moving my 7200 out from under this tree, moved it back about halfway, maybe even closer to the back of the aisle to shoot through and across here to get my couple looking at the person speaking and I just love there are so many little moments where they looked at each other like this and I'm like ah this is like this is so good and then I had my 7200 that was on the groom throughout the ceremony shooting across to get the person speaking and standing um right in here where the microphone was so that was kind of my process where I had my shots where the physical placement was of my cameras in this sequence and then I eventually moved and um if I can pull it up real quick that super close up that one to 400 millimeter lens ended up actually being a shot that I used for their kiss. I had angles of the, the 7200s on the side shooting crisscross her close up, his close up. I had the super wide in the back. I had my gimbal, but then I went and grabbed this camera here, my one to 400 with my one to 400 lens and actually got their, their final kiss. And if I can extend it, I'll even just copy this, this clip over to this timeline so we can see the full thing of it. Um, or maybe not. This is just the vertical. All right. Well, let's just cut back to the vertical. We actually see the their final kiss right here. So here's that 2470 as a wide. But then the shot I actually ended up using for their kiss here was the 1 to 400. And this was handheld on the 1 to 400. And I'm like, oh, this looked, it looks so good, especially if I could pull up the, the full 16 by 9 or 17 by nine format that I shot in. But it's like, there's just, you can mix and match. You can start off shooting a ceremony one way and then reposition cameras and tripods to serve a different purpose or a different point of view, a different focal length. That's why I love zoom lenses for weddings uh, so much, especially when I'm solo shooting. It gives me the ability to adapt and be versatile and get creative and get close ups and wides, but then also, you know, pick and choose what I want to do when I want to do it. So that's uh, the explanation and walkthrough. Again, there were so many different angles that I could have gotten. We had so much space to work with, as indicated in this, you know, this drone shot. There's so much room. And in the second shot, this drone shot, I could have, there were so many things I could have done. I really wanted to put my one to 400 millimeter or a 7200 way over here so that the bridge was more centered 
and it would have been a tightly compressed shot where this bridge would have been far away, but it still would have taken up like the bottom left third of my frame. And we would have had trees on the top left and top right of our frame. And we would have seen all of this ocean. We would have seen all this ocean in the background if we had shot across this way in this direction. So, I mean, there were so many options, so many things I could have done. I don't think I would redo it, but if I had had even more cameras, I probably would have gone for it and tried to get super creative and do even more than what I was able to accomplish um, shooting solo in this 45 second to a minute uh, moment. Um, another question I get from people is like, how do you have so many cameras? Well, at this point in time, I was not yet shooting on full frame. I was strictly shooting on micro four thirds, this camera to be specific, the Panasonic GH6. And I mean, they're, they're such small cameras and the lenses are so cheap that I'm like, I could actually go and buy two or three more of these right now with a 7200, a 24 to 70, even some prime lenses and and have an eight or nine camera set up and it wouldn't cost me that much money. And to me, it's worth it. I'm like, I can get so many amazing creative angles that people aren't going to care if like, oh, your shots don't have the most shallow depth of field. They don't have, they're not the most cinematic, this or that. Um, but I'm like, you know what? It covered, I covered so much ground here by myself. And that is something I really, that's what I'm prioritizing is getting moments in as many different ways as possible instead of trying to get the absolutely best creative mind blowing shot that will impress other videographers. You know, uh, it was amazing when I sent this to my, to my couple, and I, I cut and edited something for Instagram and social media just from this moment. I mean, the bride was like, I, this moment happened so quick, I, I forgot about it. But the fact that you got it from so many different, in so many different ways, I mean, it, it just, even in that interaction and it's exchange and conversation with the couple and the bride and showing this moment in detail and me being able to say, I did this on purpose. It wasn't on accident. You know, um, it's just so cool to see couples reactions and for them to feel blessed and be like, this, this is incredible. Like, thank you so much for capturing this in, in such a way that you did. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So that's my thought process on this scene. This is how I will often tackle solo shooting is just looking at my surroundings. Where are people going to be? Where are they going to come in from? Where are they going to walk by? What's my room and space between the bridesmaids and the front row where people are sitting or might not be sitting? Will there be chairs empty? Will there not? Can I fly my drone? Will it be too loud? All these things we're going into setting up and shooting something like this moment. So that is uh, that is that.